bing, bing, bing. And we're live. And it's Sam and Michael and Raul. And it is... <laughs> What's up on kickoff? Here we are. Yes. And I wonder if uh, the other Michael might be tempted to join us. I will just ping him. So we will see. Um, so, somewhere in the teeming tabs of mine, because... There are, you can never have too many tabs. Um, well, <laughs> maybe, maybe you can. Uh, I have got, actually, easier to find it. Here we go. In the... Here it is. Yes, it's the retrospect of kickoff notes. So, um, I don't know if... I think, Mike, you had a look. Raoul, have you had a chance to look through these? No, I did. I don't have much. No. Okay. Cool. Well, let's move through them quickly, then. Um and it's not all about me, by the way. Let's just you know, let's make that clear. Uh, let me share the screen so that they come up in the recording. Uh, so, yeah, reliable way of the previous action items. Uh, reliable way of replicating the intermittent JS photos. I thought I had found a reliable way of replicating one of them by using. Um, at least I was getting the same error by using the dumper screenshot thing, and so I thought I had been able to fix one of them. This relates to the struggles. Um, but then it was, even even with those sort of extra fixes and with the sandboxing and lockdown, and they're still there plaguing us, the little buggers. So uh, we have failed to kind of really sort them. I think, have I got any other suggestion? Yeah, basically, I, I think we need to add a cucumber tag that excludes certain tests from the CI runs mm -hmm. just to make our lives bearable. Um, <coughs> dun 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 dun. Um, yeah, getting please check labels in there. We haven't taken a real payment through the through the site. Um, we need to put in a mechanism where the, the amount is variable. It's currently fixed to um, like five dollars, which is what have you. Um, yeah, we continue to work on this. The events UX pathway. We haven't done anything on the products pathway. Um, and what we talked about last week was some better way to you know do scaffolding for pair hookup. Um, but yeah, we can talk more about that, more about that as we go on. Um, the real struggle, uh, yeah, continues to be the intermittent JS failures, and now this testing time zone thing, which is also an intermittent JS failure, maybe. Um, <laughs> um, <coughs> excuse me. I look with with somewhat some jealousy at the um, great voting activities uh, in the Met Plus projects, and wonder is that a problem that we have? We need to do more voting. I don't know. Um, so, at, at least. In terms of success, we did fix. We found a fix for the time zone bug. It's annoying that now the difficulty in testing it is getting in the way of releasing what's an important fix that just needs to go out. So I think we need to sort that out. And so maybe I'll put in there a suggestion: is that we get time zone bug fix out and worry about testing it later. Um, I mean, well, you said it's it's, it's only like failing, failing on your up on the integration <laughs> server, right? Uh, it's also failing on Raul's server, which is something that we could end up having a look at. Um, but uh, yeah, go, the um, yeah, I mean, another thing that we things we did manage to do this week is Michael and I managed to get this you know filter event by project UI kind of set up. Um, Maybe, Raul, we can have a look at that. Um, my suggestions, I guess, so the things that we could do now that would be really helpful is, one, we could have a look at this time zone bug together. Um, we could have a look together at um, the filter uh, event by product UI. Um, I think that I had sort of thought, which I particularly thought if, if Michael was here, because he's really interested, I thought we might all review the domain model together. But it, it, since Michael's not here, I'm going to put that lower down in our immediate suggestions. Um, I think, yeah, there, there's two things as regards the intermittent JS failures. Like I say, I think, you know, it kind of, it just seems insane now how much time is being drained into trying to cope with that, and there is an ongoing, and it just seems like, you know, for the two or three things that they that they are, if we have something where, and I'm, this is, they've got this in the RAG project, you can add a tag and then adjust the CI config 
so that it excludes those things. So we would still have these tests running for us locally, where they seem to pass somewhat reliably now, um, and we would just exclude them from the CI. Um, so anyway, I, mean, I, can, I can just do that and put a pull request in, that's one thing. Um, there's also, I noticed that on the CI, there's this semaphore CI profile, and I wonder if that's, you know, these different profiles for Cucumber affect the, um, I mean, that's just sort of idle speculation, really. But I guess in terms of uh, dealing with the pull request, which is perhaps our highest priority, um, you know, there's these uh, two things. Yeah, okay. Um, right, I mean, there's, there's oh, we could look at the waffle as well. Mm, yeah. So the you I, like I feel like Raul and I need to resolve this. We need to, we just look at that at least briefly the UI and then yeah the, I mean, the the time zone thing is we could all look at together. So um, is there yeah I mean this this is kind of I guess in terms of the action item you know I would say here it's like review time zone testing. Look at it, build over by project UI, and then we've got is there voting and and like review the waffle board. But this this would be my agenda kind of for the rest of the the meeting. Um, yeah, I will. I have one comment that I've that I've I've noticed over the week slash months. Go on. Is that it's almost? I mean, we we're, we're trying to do this like. This whole agile test-driven design mm -hmm, mm -hmm. type thing, mm. but it, it seems like every every now and again we get stuck on uh -huh. on these testing things for things that are working perfectly. Right, and we end up spending like like a week trying trying to get a trying to get a test done. Yeah, and I mean I, I mean, what, do we have the resources to really do that? No, I mean. <laughs> uh, I think I think the answer to that is no. Um, you know the. I mean, the, in an oh, ideal world, everything would be tested. You know, every, yeah, every, yeah, yeah, yeah. But at some point, you just gotta. I mean, yes, I, I I agree. I agree with you completely. Um, in the local support projects, you know, when I when uh, we were having lots of problems, the the locking down with cucumber and puffing Billy fixed that and allowed us to move on. Um, and I was optimistic that maybe that that would be the case for website one, but it's yeah, it hasn't it hasn't. I still think it's you know it was worth having done that because that's just that's just like good netiquette that your test suite right. isn't like massively hitting other people's things. But this is I, I I totally hear what you're saying, and that's my motivation between introducing this this you know intermittent CI fail tag is to acknowledge you know like we just can't spend any more time on it. You know, and we can't. I, I don't think. I mean, I, I think the, the the more extreme solution is just to delete the tests completely. But I think that this this has the you know this is a a better middle approach if you know what I mean. Right. I I understand. Mm, mm. But but yeah. I, I mean, it, it's uh, I, I, the irony. It, it it strikes me that that that, that there's this. You know the the, the the test the test driven thing here, and and that's why I think some people they just sort of eschew the acceptance tests and they say just let's stick to the unit tests, you know, because it's like how can you just can't afford to burn all this time on these brittle acceptance tests? So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, in general, we seem to it it, it seems to go okay until we get down to these JavaScript ones. I mean, it just seems like the technology, uh, the testing technologies and stuff, just they just aren't stable enough yet. Mm hmm. Well, I think it's also, it's it's also though you know I think there's there's a historical I mean that, that's a you know interesting you know like uh, are the testing technologies stable enough I mean I I I, I think that there you know there's there's clearly like a lot of people having problems with this and there's different solutions like I think on local support are we actually using puffing Billy I don't know sort of a portal guys on, on local support actually no we are um, yeah. I mean, I, I, but I, I think part of the problem is, you know, um, it's about a project acquiring technical debt and being left in a state where 
that that's part of you know that there's you know been these tests thrown in and they haven't necessarily been curated or it's at the time that they were being cre- created that these intermittent things maybe should have been addressed. I don't know. Anyway, um, it but it, but it certainly you know it, it kind of undermines the whole agile process if if your if your testing technology is not stable enough. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. Oh, and, and Thomas is here. Hello, Thomas. Um, Hello, guys. Hey, uh, um, but so, yeah, that, I mean, that was a you know, good, good point to make there, uh, Mike. But does that, should, should we do the things in this this order for the rest of the meeting? Is We'll kind of, like, review the time zone test failures on, on Raul's machine, then we'll have a quick look at the project UI, and then we'll get into the review and possibly some voting. Does that sound like a reasonable plan? Is, it, is there other things we need to do? I think the project UI would be quickly solved, uh, yeah. so we can stop with that. Uh, you want to look at that? Look at that first. <coughs> All right. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Well, let's let's start there, and you know, people think of other things that we need to do. Um, yeah. So, yeah, we we had some little chat going backwards and forwards with that, Raúl. Um, yeah. <coughs> yes, I think actually I've got it all running here, and that's all running on which. Uh, am I running it? Oh, I've shut it down there. Minus. Okay. So. I'm trying to open it now. Mm. Uh, and so this is this, and this is now in the events setup here. Uh, so, yes. So, uh, so go on. The, the first thing I wanted to maybe suggest is how about we, we instead of centering it, we push it to the left. So. Yeah, uh, could do. Um, I mean, I, th- I think uh, feel free to, to adjust it however you want it, really, um, if that's quickest for, for you to do. We did try putting the, the button back on the other side uh, and adding the label, and then the label was the wrong... Hi, I, I realize in retrospect, actually, we should have approached editing the label in a different way. But, um, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, is it... Um, I, I think, as I was referring... Uh, yeah, we should just do whatever is, is most uh, straightforward, I think. Yeah. Um, you, I mean, if you prefer it um, on, on the other side, then I think just, just do that in the first instance. Um, well, my, my thinking is that, like... A, Kind of like doesn't make sense to have to select. Uh, I don't know if you can see my screen. Oh, uh, okay, go on. Yeah. So like having to come kind of select the thing and then coming back to the side to click the button to validate uh, to stop the the filtering. I mean, one would assume okay, I first select it and then just click uh, next. Yeah. Right. Sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or I mean, we would like to move to a thing where the JavaScript just it auto filters ba- based on it, but it's uh, you know get get the simplest thing out first. Um, yeah. So I mean, flip flip it over onto the. Uh, my fear was, I guess, particularly depending upon the the width of the bar, if we, you know, don't have a a label. But feel free to change it to however you you like it. I I don't, I don't know that it's worth uh, spending too much time on the 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 thing that. Um, I think I was reflecting, and ending up kind of agreeing with with you uh, was that we just want to follow whatever is the, you know, the basic layout for the. What was it? Did we have buttons here? And is it forms? There we go. Yeah. So you know, whatever is most common. So like, if if people are expecting this uh, label and then the button on that side, then fine. Uh, I was just frustrated yesterday. I couldn't seem to get the label to be. Um, it just seemed to like be the wrong height. Um, mm-hmm. Against it, but um, I mean, you, you can push it back to me if you if you uh, you want you want to leave it with me, or, or do you think you can spend a, a few minutes getting it how you like it? Um, you're pretty busy with uh, craft. Okay, okay so, so I don't want to commit now and then not be able to do it. No, okay, well, then leave leave it with me, and I'll sort it. And we'll basically we'll agree we'll get it into some format like this, yeah? Okay. As like you, you would be happy as long as it looks like this, you're happy, yeah. Yeah, it just makes sense to me to to have it that way. Yeah, and you think you think, you think left left you think left justified is the way you'd like it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
all right, let's, I'll, I'll do that, and we'll turn that into an action item here. So we've got the action items, uh, which now becomes, that was sort of what I was this like, so it becomes Sam sort the UI. Okay. Uh, as agreed. Okay, so let's have a look at this. Time zone testing, I mean, huge uh, kudos to Mike for the idea behind actually getting this time zone testing working. woo And it all worked locally for me. Um, but for you, well, it's very interesting now. It, it fails on CI regularly, whatever we do. For Raul, you've got it that it fails um, when you run it in batch, but it passes um, uh, when you run it individually. Yeah. So, yeah. so now I've got to get into the right. Um, now, what is, what is even this? Git branch. Uh, where are, yes, so. Test driven fix a show event. Is that one? Is that the one? Okay. But so, I mean, this is an interesting kind of just issue. The, the bug that we have in the site at present is that, as probably people have noticed, when we look at, uh, yeah, this is here on, on local one, but on the main site as well, is that we have a combination of different time zones here because. The time is the time is and time zone is sort of being taken from the date of the very original event and not from uh, the date of the um, the actual event. So we've worked out a fairly simple fix for that, but generating a test to make that work is kind of challenging. And uh, let's go go to that test. So this is now in events, and we've got list repeating events feature. Here we go. So. So we've just, now gone. Go on, Mike. I was going to say an idea. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe we don't even care. Uh, rather than fighting with what's coming out of the JavaScript, uh -huh. maybe you can just because if you look, if you go back to your page and look at the source. Uh huh. Mm hmm. Uh, yeah, I went for it to come up. You see that date time right there underneath the time? You have the time, you have the date time. Right. You could check that. Just make sure that is correct. Versus okay, right. Versus worrying about whether the Java. I mean, because we're having all this trouble with the JavaScript, the localization mm -hmm. of the the time zone. But really, the problem that isn't the problem. That's actually working correctly. What's not mm -hmm. working correctly is that 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 date is wrong. Right. So maybe just directly check that date as your test to make sure, because that's actually checking. That's the actual bug right there. Yes. No. If we assume that the time tag and the associated, um, you know, that's the the local time gem and the JavaScript that it's pulled in. If we assume that that's doing the right stuff, that's a good. That's a great idea. I like that idea. Um, so. Because, I mean, supposedly local time has its own tests and it should be working. So. Right. Right. Yeah, I mean, it was, and, and there's an argument that says, you know, we would like to have an acceptance test as, uh, as well to make sure that we have pulled in that and that, that that then all works. However, yes, if that creates us a big problem, then, um, you know, uh, absolutely. So that's a great uh, testing strategy. Um, I was just going to, like, Raoul, were you just going to, uh, I guess there's nothing else that we can learn from your system about whether that's not, not uh, exactly, not exactly. past the things in. And you're running on OS X. Um, yeah. And, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, path of least resistance, that's a great suggestion from, uh, from Michael. So uh, can we test that the underlying date is correct? And I assume again, because the, the basic problem that this comes down to is in the view of the event system over here, and we go into the, now this is the index, yes, and so it's basically, the critical thing here is that these need, the, this is now with the fix in place, is that these need to be the instance time rather than the event start time, and so that, that time is now, as we were seeing in the, uh, in here, these two times effectively match each other. Why is one? I guess one is the end time as one is the start time. Uh, where's the, and the month there? 
But yeah, the, these two. But see, it's even there, the date time. See, we've got this is the calendar is saying Wednesday, April the 20th. And this span is saying. Right, you know, because that's, that's a time, that's a from two. That's the from two. Those are both going to be wrong. Sure. Yes. No. And I was. I'm just. Well, I'm looking at my code base here, and I'm looking at there being a fix to it. And I guess I'm. Uh, oh, that's probably because this is the yeah. live website. No. Yeah. No. It, well, it's because uh, I've changed the. Um, I've changed the branch without reloading the page. So if uh, I okay. if I now reload this page, apart from uh, uh, <laughs> having like. Screw things up because there is no longer a, a filter. Let's so go back to the events. Here we go. Yeah. So these are now all in BST. And if we inspect it here, then, yeah, now in this case, Wednesday, April 20th, yeah, these dates are, are correct. So you're, you're, I think you're absolutely right, Mike. That's a good, that's a, yeah, good suggestion. So we have at least a, a way around there. Okay. Well, that um, you know d deals with those things. I guess you know time waits for no man. Let's get on to the old um, waffle board. Um, so, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna skip over the domain vision statement because maybe we'll we'll look at that next week, Michael. Um, I haven't quite grokked this thing from Alejandro Fabio. Raúl, are you following what he's suggesting? Uh, cleaning there, really. Um, yeah. I'm just trying to open it back to you to do that. Yeah. I mean, he's he's um he's updated it so that it's all it's all going green. Um, yeah, he did. Um, so what he was doing? So I wasn't following much the update he made on the um, on the Hangout connection, but it seems like we don't need some of the. Um, some of the element that were there before, so he's just right. cleaning them up, and you know. Yeah. And and the suggestion you was made that we we merge this one after, uh, so we should merge merge the middle uh, one. Our connection. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess the thing that I would love to do is to be testing this on. I mean, this looks like. Yeah, it's just it's removed the time from generating the event instance ID, wherever that is called. Um, and then, as he's saying, he's got the Hangout connection one. I mean, I, I it, it feels to me like in the ideal world... Okay, so he's now... It looks, it looks like... Okay, so the time index is added... Here, right, it's being added within the thing itself. It's just it's sort of moving around that thing. I guess what I would love to do is I, I'd love to kind of like test it on a on a staging server rather than um, uh, de de deploying it to develop. Um, okay. But maybe he's already done that. Uh, and this is to fix issue eighteen. Right, and he's been experimenting with himself. Okay. Okay. Well, I guess let's let's give it a whirl. I guess we can always back out of it if it screws everything up. <laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah. Uh, the the reason I was actually holding off on that is that I have a few things hanging on on develop at the moment. Okay. And um, so I just noticed that. Um, when you log in, you now see these links here on the on the nav bar. Um, I guess I, I want to fix that quickly before before yeah, moving I, whatever is hanging up. I was noticing that that's looking a bit crowded. Is that a change related to Free Rangers? Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. So okay. I'm creating an issue now. Okay. All right. Yeah. So we'll that, know it's just. Uh, Yeah, no, that sounds fine. Well, I, I think that the, the upshot there is, yeah, I, I'm kind of, I'm going to give my thumbs up to the um, uh, the Hangout thing from Alejandro, and and you, you know, feel free to, um, uh, what's it, she said, oh, from me, um, 
you know, I'll, I'll leave it to you to work out the sequence of when that, you know, makes sense, right? Okay. Does that sound cool? Okay. Uh, and then that's... Okay. All right. So that's uh, that thing there. Okay. So I guess so we've got this event shows page. This We've now got a new testing strategy suggested by Mike. Thanks for that. We've talked about the UA filtering for projects. That's all the stuff in the please check column. Excellent. We've also got... Um, uh, right. We've got, some, we've got an input here from... Um, Puneet, which is his like little notes on installing on Ubuntu, which is which is great. That all looks that all looks good. Um, yeah, so I'll put yeah, and I'll leave that to you, Raul, to merge in when you're feeling good now. And I guess actually, put down should that also appear somewhere? Is it here? No, like. I guess this is a pull request that didn't. Ah, it fixes 974. Ah, okay, right. So I would have thought then, and that's still an open issue, I would have thought 974 would. Ah, I guess the, the thing is that it, it's. Um, often it needs to be like, it's annoying that it's like this. It needs to kind of be in its own line. Like that, Puneet? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm recording yep. my screen. And I think that will, we will see if that pulls it together anyway. Not that necessarily we're all relying that heavily on the waffle view. Does that push in somewhere? We will see. Anyway, 974, I just find a touch. Yes. No. 974, because set setup is the, let's have a look. Setup. There we go. Oh, so it has attached it. So let's move. Oh, no, not force touch. Don't do that. Let's put that into please check. Okay. Great. And our thousandth pull request. Whee! Right. Okay. So. And my first one. Say again. And there's the first one from me. Mm, there you go. The, big, it's, the old and the new combined into one. Uh, so. Right, so we've got event and there's events show page. We've got one through, but they're both kind of in. Whereas that was also a bug there. Well done on your first pull request, uh, Puneet. Okay. Thank you. Right. Um, so I guess we just work our way down the in progress items. Um, question about doing it. So best approach of event, but yeah. So I don't know, this is my sort of chat about doing some features for DevOps. So I think it's the right way to go. I will just come back to that. Um, this is the epic for the premium membership. Um, we've got new craft academy people who are getting premium membership from Agile Ventures. So you know more of that needs to get sorted out, but nothing to immediately do. Um, Raul, you've got your upgrade gems with known security flaws. Um, I get you. You will get back to that yeah. when you're. I guess in principle, did you did you think you need to be upgraded to Ruby two three before you can make progress on that, or can you build off the new cle of the new develop? Um. So. Uh, okay. Um. So Mike. Yeah. So allowing users to create events in the local time zone. Is there um, what's what's the way forward for this? Uh, yeah, Mike and I made some progress. We were gonna pair on it this morning, uh, mm -hmm. but he had something come up. Oh, okay. Uh, so hopefully we'll uh, be able to pair up on it tomorrow. Okay. Okay. So you're not you're not blocked. Just uh, you'll you'll get to it. No. Yeah. We we've kind of pivoted our our approach a little bit. Okay. So, but it looks like it'll work. Cool. Cool, cool. Yeah, that'll be a great one to be in there. I have the ongoing thing of like getting the, the documentation sorted out, which I'm kind of beating myself up about. Partly, I've sort of switched to a lot of my doctor's work is, is working on the AV102 course now, but that's uh, my pain. The um, moving on from this, the uh, the overall, like I, I think we're actually 
making some reasonable progress now in terms of having the the you know Mike, Michael and I have done a lot of work uh, fixing individual things which are gradually making their way out to production and, and some of them are already out there. Um, we had a nice, very good discussion with Puneet the other day actually about the challenges of using the interface to sort of try and get to do pairing for the MOOC. And so, yeah, the proof will be in the pudding now. We will see if the changes make the experience, experience uh, smoother uh, going forward. I guess for that um, UI thing with the uh, filtering the projects by, um, filtering the events by project, it would be nice to make that a, a JS thing, but we'll, what's that? I guess we'll just add, this seems to be something, the sizing on this thing, oh, that waffle. But so that would be, we've got, this is in the uh, filtering, we've got the UI for filtering. I, I actually kind of like it as a filter because it's, some, because it's something you can direct, you can go directly to. Hmm. Uh, like, yes. Like from the, like from the, the actual, uh, from the MOOC like website or whatever, you can actually link directly to and it'll show you all the events for the, for the MOOC. Yes. Or stuff. And I, I don't know. Well, I mean, I'm sure you could do it in JavaScript, but that it would have to be coggled on. Yes, yes. Um, the uh, I'm, well, I, th I think it's not one or the other. No, I, I, it's, it's, I'm looking forward to being kind of a big win based on um, us being able to link it. But there, there's right. not what would be. I think I think at the moment, if I, if I just switch back to that other branch. Um, which is now this one. Uh, then it, it's more that you can the, the. I mean, we've set it up so that you know if you um, you know choose a, if you do a filter, you know things like if you reload the page, then it maintains that name there. But you can at the moment in the absence of JavaScript, you can kind of do this, and you can get the page into a state where it says one thing, but it, that, you know, the, the change is not reflected. So I think we can still have all of this thing with the routing zone, which we put in separately, and just have a, a, a JavaScript so that basically as soon as you select the, the elements... That does a refresh? That it does an automated that it, that it does an automated refresh or okay um, yeah okay I, I I was misunderstanding with you I thought by JavaScript you were going to filter it via JavaScript um uh no I mean it, I mean it could be like an AJAX request even even then but, but I mean, you know probably an automated refresh in the first instance is is, is the the simplest thing but okay uh, yeah that's that's fine I I misunderstood what you were yeah. meaning by well, JavaScript well, well, I thought you were talking about something else. Well, I, I think M M Michael is interested in, you know, bringing in maybe, um, you know, React, uh, looking at, you know, moving from our JavaScript sprinkles approach to the more modern, you know, actually using some sort of consistent framework for the way we, you know, beyond jQuery from, for the way that we do the JavaScript. But that's, uh, anyway, that, that's, that's something we'll look at separately. So, you know, for filtering, I guess the question is there is can we um, uh, automate the um, updating of the list and user selects, but, but we'll see. I mean, I think we've we've, we've made a you know number of changes on, on this approach. It it now before making too many more changes, we should be starting to wait for feedback from people using the changes we have made. You know, we we we, we run the risk of anticipating too much. So yeah, documentation yes. Um, Investigate smoothing the onboarding process. I guess that's that's. I'm, I imagine that's something that you haven't had a chance to to look at, um, Mike. I, I interestingly. I don't know, I must follow up no, with, although that those Ubuntu notes would yeah. definitely help. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of part of this. Yes, well, and the, I mean, I kind of like in a, in an idle off moment. I, you know, I I kind of did, went through the sequence of setting up and just got stuck on the Postgre install. But I know that several people have installed local support on C9 and obviously have got around the Postgre issue. So. It seems in principle. I, mean, I think this is going to be as we move on in the through the MOOC through the next couple of months, we're going to get to the point where the MOOC's basically under control, and hopefully people are okay. And then they're going to start saying about projects, and then that we're going to come back to you know trying to onboard uh, new people. But um, okay, so I guess the real question here is: Are, are there? Well, let's let's look at other things that are in the ready column. So 
I've got then an epic of the events refactoring, which is like loads of just sort of stuff that I think should be doing. Oh, I just want to show you actually, guys. Um, uh, I we managed to do some um, refactoring yesterday, Michael and I, in this pull request that I th I'd like to just show you. Uh, that's for this one, and we basically the this is the for the events controller, and so you can see here, right? It was starting to get kind of long. This was like five lines at the the limit of where 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 I'm comfortable at the length of a method, and we were th this next step involved adding another line. So we tipped my the heuristic or Sandy Metz's heuristic of like five lines per method. And what do you think about so the, the, the particular thing here is that this is like what is this doing? What do you think of our new method here? Uh, uh, what we do here? Okay. So can you guys by? All right, so I remember this method. Is this the one you you were working on a few a few weeks ago? Yes, yes. So we made a change here uh, originally, which was to introduce this, you know, the project filtering, and that made it a mm -hmm. bit more complex. And I kind of I cleaned up other aspects of it, but it was still not very, re you know, like looking at this, you have to kind of sit down and stare at it for a while before you can work out what it's doing. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, and index is not very descriptive as what's going on. So I kind of, uh, with Michael yesterday, we kind of looked under the hood about what's happening with event next occurrences, and we worked out a, effectively a summary of all, of all of what we're doing here. Like if we were writing documentation, we would say this this is what we're actually doing is we are listing all the upcoming events with repeats by spe the specified project. Okay. And our, the idea is that this is our kind of readable code that tells you what's really going on. Yeah. And and the question I I have for for you guys is. Does this language make sense? Do you feel confident? Like, does, like, does it make you think that? Oh, right, that's what this method is doing. No. Yeah. Yep. That sounds that sounds good to hear. So the thing that you might you might look at and you might think about and you might tell me this is too convoluted is in order to support doing this with specified projects, we then have you know, like a little method here, private method here, specified project, right? Which mm -hmm. sets the app project instance variable if there is a project specified. And the idea is to make each of these individual methods kind of readable so that you can kind of, you know, if, if you're not, if you don't care what's going on, you can say, okay, this does, this gets me the specified project. But that still that you can look inside here and see, oh, okay, this gives me the project friendly thing from the params project ID. If there's been a project specified, okay. If the, that's not blank, and then this is the method here, and we've got list all upcoming events by, with repeats by. So that's this method here, and so again we're sort of keeping this down just to a couple of lines, and it works out our the base events, you know, and depending upon whether we have a project or not. So we either get all of the events or we get the events where that are associated with that project. And then we set our instance variable based upon listing all of the upcoming events chronologically with repeats with base events. And then finally, you can now see this little ugly bit of code there is summarized and documented as doing this under here. All right. So I don't know if your reaction to that is like, Ugh! What, that was, you know, that was kind of like, this was basically a relatively short method, and it's now turned into, we've got four methods there. The argument that I would, uh, this is a very sort of Maker's Academy style to the to the code. There was a couple of people who really, they, I mean, actually, they would like, almost all of their methods would only be one, it would be even like two lines, three lines, that's too long. Um, so uh, anyway, I, I I like the idea though that the, that I I think there is something wrong from a Ruby point of view if the code isn't readable. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean I, 
Yeah, I, I, I agree that, that that little convoluted little piece of inject, whatever the world that thing's doing, Yeah, uh, that definitely should not be in the index method. Right. Uh, having like five methods to to accomplish it. Maybe excessive? Uh, it seems a bit excessive. Mm. And, and what I would do, just, just simply because none of these methods are reused. Right, right. Our, not, not at the moment. Not at the moment. Yeah. And well, I mean, I mean if, if, if we can see a situation where, if I saw a situation where I would be reusing them, mm. then, I, then I would do it. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, it, this is just me personally. When, when I'm coding, mm. you know, it, four or five lines, it isn't a, that's a, it isn't a big deal. It, and the index method is one thing, but when you have your own, when you have it, down inside of a private method to me is not a big deal, mm. and I wouldn't necessarily break it apart if if it's not if I'm not break if I'm not extracting components that I'm going to use elsewhere. No, in, indeed, and I th I think that that's that's probably where I've lent to in the past, and this was a bit of an indulgence yesterday of just go, of going on. Um, I'm quite I'm quite pleased with this, you know that you. No, I I like that, but that's that's. Good because the, the that other index method you have no idea what in the world that does. Right, and this kind of summarizes yeah. it. Yeah, and I, I think it's it's um <coughs> like in terms of what like easily we could kind of collapse these four methods into two, you know, and it wouldn't be such a big deal. And actually, part of the reason why we have that many is is uh, doesn't matter, but <laughs> is is because of the series of stages. Anyway, I just wanted to bring that up as a kind of thing for us to reflect upon. Um, as we go forward and code refactoring and so on. Um, yeah, yeah, I'd agree with you that you know, I, I would collapse those down to two, those four down to two down there. Yeah. I don't necessarily know that you're buying anything with that project yeah. specified question. Mark I might, right I, I, I might, I might do that because I've, I've got to do the, the sort the UI and then it's like one might say that collapse um, uh, four private methods to two. I, the, 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 the next. Um, Round of refactoring that I we might do subsequently, depending upon how this evolves, is um, you know uh, is actually moving all of this out into a service, uh, you know, with the idea that there would be other other things that can you know consume and deal with events. But rather than going for the whole lot of the service, we started by refactoring into private methods in the controller. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, and I guess oh, the reason that I <laughs> was reminded of that was because of this epic e events refactoring. Um, I don't know if we do. We need to vote on the epic events refactoring. That seems. It, it seems to me, just looking through this, that if we just order like this, this GitHub commit counts thing that we have, we've had that hanging around for a while. That seems like something that, you know, should be fixed. Um, uh, that UX like these UX bugs. Yeah, there's the saving event on finish. Yeah, the, these two. Let's just do this in part. I would say that these 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 were two UX bugs that I then identified as we were kind of polishing the events thing. I think these are these are kind of high priority. That's kind how, of like a go on. I was gonna, how did GitHub get broken? I thought we fixed that. Well, uh, no. I think what we had was we had a, a a revision for it that we thought might fix it. And it turned out that it didn't. Um, I, but I think we got a de more detailed error message, and it's a fairly straightforward fix, I think. Um, okay. Should we just have a look at this? Basically, uh, yeah. And so, Raul, this is just a GitHub commits job, app jobs, uh, there, line 30. And it's probably moved around now. Mm -mm -mm. But there's. Basically, it, it, it's operating through it, and as soon as it gets to some somebody who is nil, it kind of breaks. Do, do you remember where it was? Um, the uh, last file changed just as an error. I did. I didn't think it did. Maybe this, maybe this air break that I put in there uh, was the older one. Is an older one, which is kind of annoying. Yeah. Do, do we have a a newer version of that air break one? Let's have a look. Um, I'm just having a look in the issues. Uh, is this the right one? And you saw by there's an air brake label. So Here we go. Uh, looks like have we got more than one of these. 
So we've got set up air brake to catch errors, or that's on Agile Bot. So it's 9-1. Look for 9-1-2. 9-1-2. OK. And that's the most recent. Right, and that's a JSON. That's the, I think nine one two is something that that's something else that maybe needs to be dealt with. But it looks like eight seven seven. That's the most recent uh, thing. Yes. So, yes, so this is the issue. If we look at the thing. So it's and it's actually hitting there in project RB fifty three. Uh, that's the model project RB uh, fifty three. Um, there. So it's like. This GitHub, if the GitHub URL is nil, then this is failing here. So, yep. you know, this is one actually now. Now, Puneet, if you were uh, free to work on something now, I would say this would be a great, straightforward. You know, you've done your first sort of documentation pull request. I would say maybe grab this one. I'll, I'll, I'll take a look. Actually, I'm, I'm kind of uh, stuck in something right now, but I'll take a look. Okay, is sure. Um, uh, when you say stuck on something, are you stuck on uh, a website one thing or just some other thing? No, no, it's it's another thing actually. Okay, sure. Um, but uh, I'll the latest uh, version of the standard trace. Uh, okay, so well, what we could what we could do here is we could just have a quick vote on. Uh, is it, I, mean, I guess I guess probably the the thing to do here really is. Uh, Maybe we can close the eight two zero. Right. And close this one. Can't, I can't close it from here. Apparently not. Uh, is close this one. Uh, yeah, close that one. And so here. And now, should we just have a quick vote on on this, on fixing this? Ah, damn it. Here we go. Let's go sure. to. Slack, uh, voting on bonk. So, um, does everybody understand the, the issue? Any, does it, any further discussion required for um, understanding what's the, the problem with this, uh, this code? If not, then I'll encourage you to um, get your uh, vote of one, two, or three ready in the um, website one Slack channel. Uh, so one for a simple, two for um, a bit more involved, and three for one of those complex buggers. And um, if we're all ready, I will do a countdown of three, two, one, go. And we are unanimous there on a one. Excellent. OK. Uh, so we can put the size of a one on that. I guess we're not supposed to point bugs. Well, or at least that's that's interesting. Okay, so we've got that bug there. We've got uh, there's another one of the Jira. Okay, so I would just say that there we've got these two UX bugs here that I think are I would say are high priority ones that we might just do a quick look at. Um, so we've got this one here that when event edits on existing event fails due to, re be, to repeat n being blank, the state about days is lost. So I can just show you this problem. So we've got the, if we go to the main site, and if we were to, were to create a, do I want to create a new event? I don't have to go and delete it in the, what have you. But so if we have, um, we set it as weekly, and, and like here, say that we, oh, here we go. So I, I'm, this is like, just a test event, and we've got it uh, set up here so that you saw when we opened it, it was default to never. But if we set it to to weekly, it defaults to um, you know we have it gives us it defaults to repeat to the repeat ending, but it doesn't set an end date. And we can say never, but that's the non-default option. But if I now try and save it, and I've set, thought about my event, ah, 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 and then I forget to put the end date in. If I save it like so, it says repeat ends on can't be blank. Ah, and it seems to maintain the days. Eh. Well, so that looks like that's fixed then. <laughs> OK, well, that's a simple one. Yeah. Um, OK, need to review maintaining appropriate state. Of Edit on exist. Oh, on a, uh, OK, on an existing event. OK, sorry, sorry. So right, clearly, it, it, it's not a problem on a new event. But allegedly, let's go. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Goodness me. 
Okay, go to... Um, can we have... What's his name? It's Beck. There we go. So listen, if I was to set this up and say, let, yes, let's have... Edit the event details. And I was to say, let's add a Wednesday and put on, and let's not... And for some reason, I had deleted the end date, and I said save. Right, repeat ends can't be blank. And yes, there, it's lost the Wednesday. Aha. So there is a bug. Uh, I shouldn't be pleased about that, should I? Okay. Right. Anyway, um, so let's just put in there. It's got like... Uh, uh, so that's um, one. I think I, what, the thing that really irritates me is that we lose the... Um, there we go. We can say like this. All right, so we go back and you get it. That's, that's four. Okay, that's that one. So then we can just sort of slap in the, the sequence that we to, to replicate the whole issue. Like that is... Uh, so this is select extra days on uh, existing event. Um, remove uh, any end date and fail validation which is now we still oh we've now lost the bullet okay right save uh, yeah show that that I mean another thing is we'd love that to actually be show it it should be a surrounding the, the thing where we've had, had the problem that's another story fail validation uh we uh, then we lose user data on which days were selected, uh, which breaks Raskin's first law of HCI, which is that no system shall uh, cause or through inaction allow uh, any loss of human data. Or something to that effect. So, um, does uh, everybody feel that they have a full and detailed understanding of the problem? Mm -hmm. And maybe everybody feels they have even more understanding than they cared to have, um, have an excessive understanding of the problem, and are just trying to get it out of their minds. Um, so, uh, now for fixing that bug, uh, let's go for a one, two, or a three. If you want to go into um, Slack, and get ready with your typing fingers. Um, I'm just going to check whether we... Do we have an issue then about... So validation... What do we have there now? I think I'm just going to create a new issue. Is everybody ready with their typing hands? This is um, validation fails on events should uh, highlight the field with the problem uh, rather than having a flash in the corner. Uh, Marilyn's just done that for us on um, uh, on Log Sport. So if we're ready for uh, voting in the Slack, three, two, one, go! Aha. So, Mike, you're uh, in the absence of Puneet voting. You're the odd one out. Do you want to tell us why you think it's a one rather than a two? Uh, I mean, it, to me, it didn't seem like it was. It should be a super difficult issue to fix. Um. Yeah, I, I think I was going for a two because just I, I felt like the getting the acceptance test to, to you know all, all sorted out would be a little bit more involved. Raul? Oh well, yeah. Well, the the <laughs> test is always a three. <laughs> <laughs> Fixing the issue is one thing. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah, yeah. Well, what 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 was your motivation for a two, Raul? So I I couldn't quite picture how I would solve it yet. So that's. Why I set up for for it too. It seems yeah. like an easy fix, but I can't picture exactly um, how to deal with that at the moment. So, yeah. yeah, I think I, th I think it, it it's it's you know it's not as straightforward as this one that we just looked at. Um, mm -hmm. If we're lucky, it should be a one, but I'm kind of being conservative on going for a two. So, yeah. um, what do you think, Mike? Should we um, go for a two for the moment? Yeah, two for sure. If you're including testing in that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So I mean, it, it doesn't. It shouldn't involve any JavaScript. So it's not a three. But anyway. Um, yeah. So uh, then we've got this other one here, which is saving an event after an edit should return you to the edit show page, 
not the list page. So this is a personal bugbear of mine. Is that you know if we now uh, get back, so this is just in the state that it was. But if I now save this, right, it's going to take me to the events page. So it with a little thing saying you know event updated. Oh no, and it's gone away. Damn it. Um, ah, what? Oh, yeah, okay. Yes, Craft Academy. Oh, anyway, um, and then you can kind of. I think that's I think that's terribly confusing. Like when you, uh, f from my point of view, if you've just edited, you know, an um, an event, why that? And it's funny how you get hit the back button and you get the flash message hanging around. I think that that would also be solved actually. So if we if we um, go back to here, validation fails. Uh, also, removing flash should avoid the strange hanging around of the flash object of flash errors after backing out a page uh, after uh, just hitting the back button okay uh, come on okay all right what was I just looking at now brain this one right uh, so if we're in this situation where uh, we're about to save a page, there we go. Dum, dum, dum. So, e.g., saving a uh, editing an event. Save. Can I get this quickly enough? Boom. All right, that's it. Right takes us to the event list. Uh, uh, with flash note, but uh, personally, I would rather be taken to the event updated event page itself to see my edits in place. And is that is that just me? What happens when you create a new event? Does it does it have the same? Does I think it, it, I think it's also the same thing. So I mean, uh, and the interesting thing also here is in the related thing in the, in the page, it doesn't actually show me, you know, the, the details. I think, I, but anyway, that's <laughs> this, this page. But that that's uh, see my edits in place. Um, uh, one, uh, although. Ironically, the full details of the event are not actually all displayed. Uh, so that's uh, C. I'm going to put C. This is 1002 and create a new issue uh, and say add issue event show should show all details e.g. days on which event repeats, etc. Okay. Okay. And is it the new one? Well, I think actually we do that on the local system. If we do a new event, actually, and I've moved the event, I don't actually, based on what you said, Mike, I'm, we, we were just sort of that we've moved the new event button up here. I don't know if that makes it more noticeable for you. Yeah, um, uh, it's it's definitely better than that little little bit of text over in the corner. Like yeah. it was before. If, if, if I do, like here, so I, if I create a new event here, test event, this is on my local system, and I do save, it, ah, so no, when it's, when it's saved... With the first yeah, I thought that was the I thought that was the case. If you create a new event, it does correctly go to the. Yeah, it's interesting that that doesn't have any dates associated with it. I guess that's because I accidentally created it in the past. No, four twenty. Yeah, oh no. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I did. Okay, it was in the past. So it now has no information. That that seems odd. Okay. <laughs> it, it seems like it should have not created it. <laughs> or something. I don't know. Why, okay. why did it let you create an event in the past? I don't know. Uh, well, we've won, what an exciting range of new issues that, like, um, events uh, should not be allowed uh, to be created in the past. Arg. Um, okay. 
right? Gosh, you know, UI bloopers. Okay, well, I think we've we've been getting at this for a, for a while. Um, I think we've oh so well. Let's just do a, a vote on this nine five nine three five. Um, so this redirecting. So after after editing an event, that you should go back to the event show page and not the list page. Do we want to have a quick vote on on that, and then we could sort of say that's that's enough for today. Um, sure. I'm going to post that into the Slack. Uh, okay. So if you get your vote ready on that, um, three, two, one, go. Unanimity. I can't say it, but I love it. Um, there we go. Right. Okay. Well, that's a bit of voting. Um, I don't know if there's if there's anything that anybody else is seeing on the site that they are particularly like uh, uh, concerned about. Uh, yeah, I, I have a feeling. We'll put this over here in done. People are coming in now. I think that I think that the the these automated Slack invites were not working. But I'm seeing lots of people come in now that I've put a new thing in there. So uh, that's good. Uh, the only other thing that that I'm looking at the site and is immediately kind of annoying me is the fact that this become a supporter thing is not lined up with those things there. I thought I created a. Yeah, I think there is an issue for that. Yeah. Um, Event filtering the project should have nice things automated updates. That's the mm, yeah. For some reason, I'm not I'm not seeing it because this is like mm, supporter. Mm -hmm. Oh, somehow it's moved into the done. Become a supporter button off center with other things. Why is that in the done? Done. Some reason it is done. It, it's been closed because no, this this was fine. How huh? did this get closed? The thing is, I created this one. Oh, you, so you've... Oh, maybe, maybe it's been... Right, so uh, you've... Ah, I just noticed seven, nine, seven, eight. Maybe when I wrote that message, it closed the, the ticket as well. I <laughs> think that may be the case. So <laughs> I'll just reopen that issue. Uh, yeah. Anyway, okay. So that that's uh, let's just move. Make sure that that gets into the ready thing. I think that would be a lovely thing to have. I'm right. Yeah, it looks a bit odd, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Yeah. Um, right. The mic up, mic up forms there. Okay. Yeah. Da -da -da -da. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. So that that's. I think. I think now at least the ready. Um, oh, well, let's. We could just. Should we just quickly vote on this one? Sure. Yeah, let's vote on that. That's going to be quite fast. I heard. Let's say you up. Okay, when you fingers on the button, sirs. Three, two, one, go. Ah, now, Mike, you're thinking that's that's more difficult. It's CSS. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. Well, my, my com I mean, I, I'm happy to say two, and and then you know we find out that it's easier. Um, the for, for me the um uh I, I'm get, I'm getting more confident with CSS recently so that's uh, that's me me for a one uh, I I think it would generally but we would say that for, for me it would be a two for you guys it might be a one <laughs> well and I, famous last words of course I, mean, I think it's the kind of thing that I I would say that this kind of issue would not involve a test like ensuring that that was we would just fix it and because yeah. the pixel thing yeah. would, be, would be ridiculous wouldn't it um yeah okay okay. All right, um, great stuff, guys. Yeah, is, is there is there anything else that anyone is is, is worried about in the site that, that that is terribly under that we've that we've not mentioned or not covered or anything at all? If not, I think we're 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 good. I will just pop to neat. Oh, and I wonder if I can now put touch touch. I think I, I can't add touch, assign touch uh, Puneet to that unless I add into our internal team, which I will do, and then I might assign to that just to you know. But it's you can always unassign yourself, Puneet. 
Um, yeah, okay, well, I think we're, um, yeah, solid. Thanks, guys. Um, I thought that was that was quite productive. I guess I will catch up with you on the on the morrow. All right. All right. Sure. Thanks, guys. Good meeting, guys. Thanks very much. Bye for now. Cheers.